collecting things can be really fun and certain things are harder to get. This is an example of a book that is pretty hard to get if you're in the US. It's called Higher Algebra and it's by Bernard and Child. This book is from India. It is a reprint of the classic book, Higher Algebra by Bernard and Child, but it has been printed in India. And currently I don't know anywhere else where you can actually buy this book. It's really, really rare to actually find original copies of this textbook. If you happen to have a copy or if you know of another place where you can find this book, please leave a comment because I'd be really, really curious. So what prerequisite knowledge do you need in order to pick up this book, sit down with it, and actually learn some mathematics? Well, in my opinion, the most important thing you need in order to learn from this book is motivation. If you come into it and you're motivated and you sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil and I just got to give it a whiff. Oh, it smells so good. You will learn a ton of mathematics. Here it talks about who the book is for. This volume is essentially a textbook of algebra for students working for higher school certificate, mathematical scholarships, and examinations of similar standard. It will be followed by a second volume entitled Advanced Algebra, in which the subject will be developed further along the lines of honors courses in universities. It is assumed that students possess a knowledge of elementary algebra so far as progressions and permutations and combinations. I do think this book is considerably more advanced and it contains considerably more mathematics than modern books that have the word algebra in the title. So if you're in an algebra class and you're watching this video and you say, hey, higher, higher algebra, that's like my algebra class, but harder. It's way harder, but it's also way cooler because you get all kinds of really interesting math in a legendary math book like this. This book is actually surprisingly good quality. I was a little disappointed that it was a soft cover. I was hoping for a hard cover book, but I kind of like that it's soft cover. I've started to appreciate soft cover books a little bit more. Sometimes when I go to bed at night, I'll take a math book with me and I'll lay in bed. And I've noticed that I tend to do that more with soft cover books. I don't like laying in bed and reading a hard cover. It just, it just doesn't feel the same. I know that sounds strange, but yeah. So I think that's something that's changed for me is appreciating soft covers a little bit more. I just got to give it a whiff. This, this particular copy has just an incredible scent. Oh, wow. Even the back of the book is really interesting. I love when books do this, when they give a list of other books published by the same publishing company. Sometimes you're not interested, but in this case, I'm really interested in these books. Maxford Titles, really cool. These are classic books that have been reprinted by this company in India. Higher Algebra, that's a really good book. I actually have that one. Higher Algebra, Enlarged Edition, S. Bernard and J. M. Child, Maxford Books. This is supposed to be the enlarged edition, but some of the variables are really small. In particular, fractions look really small. For example, down here, we have the fraction one third. It's in that square root, and it's pretty tough to see. Let's take a look at the contents of this classic book. It starts with the theory of numbers, then rationals and irrationals, polynomials, symmetric and alternating functions, substitutions, complex numbers, theory of equations, partial fractions, summation of series, and determinants. Lots of topics in this math book. Systems of equations, reciprocal and binomial equations, cubic and biquadratic equations, theory of irrationals, inequalities, sequences and limits. Then here we have convergence of series, continuous variable, and more theory of equations, polynomials, and rational fractions. This chapter is on exponential and logarithmic functions and series. Then it talks about convergence, binomial and multinomial theorems. So tons of math that you normally wouldn't see in most modern books. So if you were to take a class in college, it's very unlikely that any of your books would contain all of the knowledge that is in a book like this. And here is the rest of the contents. So quite a bit. 
This book really gets to the point. Let's take a look at chapter three, polynomials, definitions, an expression of the form where a sub zero through a sub n are independent of x is called a polynomial in x of the nth degree. A polynomial in x and y is the sum of a number of terms of the form where a is independent of x, y and m and n are positive integers. So it just goes through and just gives you a lot of mathematics right away. Here's an example of some of the exercises. You can see that they can be pretty hardcore. So this book does have some really interesting mathematics and interesting exercises. If you're curious about solutions, it does have answers to some of the problems, but not all of them. But I'm very, very grateful that it at least has some solutions. If you are a person who knows some calculus, maybe you've taken calculus too, this is an opportunity to explore some things that you may not have seen that were not covered in your course. This chapter here talks about some really interesting series tests. For example, here you have a test. It says that this series is convergent if P is greater than one and divergent if P is less than or equal to one. Here's another series test called Comer's test. Then here we have Rob's test. I've seen this in advanced calculus books actually, so that's quite interesting that it's in this book. And Goss's test. Here they talk about De Morgan's and Bertrand's test. So all kinds of series convergence tests that you don't normally see in a Calculus II course. And here we have Dirichlet's test. This is the chapter on continued fractions. If you've heard of continued fractions, you might think of the famous mathematician Ramanujan. He was famous for some of his work with continued fractions. So it's really cool you can actually read this book and attempt to learn some continued fractions. One con of this book is that I feel that the text is a little bit small. For example, here we have S sub n equals V sub n minus V naught equals 1 fourth n. That's pretty small and kind of hard to read. It would be nice if it was a little bit larger, but these are reprints and I don't know how that process works, but I'm assuming they just take the old book and copy it. So maybe that was the original size of the text when the book was originally published. This is certainly an epic math book, and this particular copy is from India. I don't know where else to get this book. If you know where people can buy these books, please let me know. Really cool to have this, and all of these other books here are also classics. Most of them are very difficult to find. Some of them you can still find. For example, I know Higher Algebra, that's still available. You should be able to find a copy of that. Anyways, I just thought I would make this video to show you a really cool book from India. It's called Higher Algebra, and it's by Bernard and Child. Until next time, good luck and take care.